Hey everyone, I want to welcome you to HutCast. HutCast is a pragmatic approach to several things that happen in life and happen around us. So tune in, check us out. If you like us, give us a thumbs up to HutCast. Hey everybody, it is December 25th, 2020. Today's going to be a good show. Today's topics are going to be Tennessee, what's going on down there. Next we're going to talk about plow trucks, tow trucks, and emergency apparatus. And after that we're going to talk about the dreaded shot. Yes, segment three is going to be all about COVID. COVID and the shot and whether or not it's right for you. So stick around. Let's have some conversation. Again, website's getting put up soon, so you'll be able to um, have some back information and or listen to episodes there. We are now also on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. So look us up there, too, uh, whatever your favorite or wherever you get your favorite podcast from, and uh, give us a bookmark. Thanks, and stick around for a good show. Well, everybody, Merry Christmas. And uh, our first segment here is going to be about Christmas and Tennessee. So what really is going down in Tennessee today? This morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30, 6.30 in the morning, someone decides to, uh, quote-unquote, leave an RV in front of a, a bar and, what, light it off? It's, it's what, rum a candle? We don't know enough about this yet. And history shows that when you blow something up, you need something with volume. Look, look at the McVeigh deal. He, he didn't pull up in a in an RV and say, hey, let's load this thing up and pop it off. He pulled up in a rider truck. Now, this rider truck was loaded with the proper mixes of anything that can pop. This thing popped, and it popped big. It took half a building down. Disgusting as it was, McVeigh had a formula. Now, we haven't seen all the damage down there, but I do have a guy who is down on vacation in Tennessee, and he is uh, like not too far from this. He's, he's, he's already called and told us that he's okay, that him and his family are okay, and we're going to get him on the phone here in just a little bit and see if we can get his take on uh, what's going on down there. So stand by. We'll try and get him on the phone. It's, downtown's locked down. Yeah, have you, uh, have, have you been able to get get any place besides downtown? Evacuating the downtown hotels. Okay, and uh, any restaurants still open? Or are they? I mean, they locked everything down, right? No, it's Christmas. They're closed. Could you hear it from where you were at? No. No. We're, we're thirty minutes from downtown. Oh, you're half hour. Okay. Were you by that place when it went off at all? I mean, previously? Yeah, we drove by it. We were, by, we were there the day before. Ah. Uh-huh. We parked a mile from where the explosion happened. Okay. Yeah. But you're all you're all good and all safe down there? Yep. Okay. Well, then, super great. I just wanted some information from what happened down there. And uh, drive drive fast, take chances, and we'll catch you later. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so so there you have it. They they couldn't provide much, but they, they had been to it the night before. And uh, uh, on a side note, we did have talked to them earlier, and they said that the shows can still be open only if they were to serve food. So the, so the dining facilities can uh, sell you a $20 tater tot, and then on top of that, they pass around a, a little hat. So that's how they pay the performers. Uh, they come out, sing their songs, do their dance, and then they get around that by saying they're an eating establishment. Pretty pretty interesting concept down in Tennessee. Uh, they're hit just like anybody else is, and it's a major metropolitan. So given the fact that they are doing what some of us else around the country should be doing to maintain and keep bars open. But let's go back to this um, Christmas morning deal. What what sick individual decides to, hey, 
Let's blow something up. Let's put it in an RV. I, I, I can only imagine in Tennessee where where it's a, a great destination for Christmas. That's what I, what I hear. That all these people who are down there in RVs stop, park, they do their thing. You know, I'm, I'm an RVer, so I get it. You know, when, I, when I'm out and about, that's, that is our transportation. We, we, we sleep in it. We camp in it. We, we travel in it. And when, when these guys figured out a way to use the RV, and luckily this one cop who did see this says, hey, this really looks weird, um, whatever that trigger point for him was, and says, we need to, we need to start getting people out of here. So kudos to that cop who says, we're, we're going to shut this down and, and we're going to start clearing people out. That, that's why there was nobody hurt. Uh, back to the RV thing. Have they no sacrilege here? Really? An RV, the, the American dream of getting out and being in an RV in our country, and they want to use that as a vehicle. Smart move, but pretty stupid. Because an RV, first of all, can't carry much weight. They're limited on their actual size. So how much can they really carry? The McVeigh deal, a rider truck, was a designed empty, heavy truck. I'm sure it was a class six, maybe a class seven, that can haul 50,000 pounds of material. And that's why their explosion was 10 times what this one was. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. How do you fix this? I mean, today it's RVs. Yesterday it was... Rider trucks. What's what's tomorrow? What's tomorrow going to be? I, I can't even begin to figure out what are these guys trying to do. But again, there, there's been no responsibility by any faction of this. Nobody's come forward and says, "Here, here's what's going on." But they do have, and I would imagine so in any city, they have a ton of cameras. With these cameras, you you, you don't you don't mistake in this. You you, you don't. Some of these cameras are so intense, and I know this personally, that with these devices and their tracking software and their facial recognition and their all the stuff that these cameras can do, how, how are you going to get away with it? Other than in the middle of a pandemic where we have everybody and their brother wearing a mask, what are you going to see? That's how they get away with it. This this pandemic, it's, this mask, this, hey, save my life, I'll save yours, wearing over your face deal, is going to backfire on us in the worst way. This is one of those ways. I, I, can't, uh, I can't even begin to tell you that no matter how good your camera is, you ain't, you ain't going to see nothing. All you're going to see is uh, the, the way they digress into a situation, the way they egress into a situation, what they drive... If at all they have the right plates on it, there's a whole lot of not knowing. You'll get a height, you'll get a you'll get a, a suggested weight, and again, some of this software is some pretty intense stuff. By that, with the software being okay, it'll guess your weight, it'll guess your your size, it'll it'll do everything for you, but you still have to have that, and that's the one percent of the guys out there. One percent of these people have that kind of software. Luckily, I'm one of those guys who have that kind of software because my cameras at my location, are, are top-notch. We'll see you coming, going, doing, you name it, we got it. But you can't stop them. They can just still go up and do what they don't want to do. Then it comes into your second tier of security. Now, with all these cameras down there, they'll catch these guys. They'll see who's coming in and out. But again, what are they going to see when they see it? Probably not much other than who and what and where. If this guy left on foot, okay, now they can trace him and they can track him. Eventually, he's got to have a getaway point to a car, or he just went underground, or, or who knows where he went. Now we'll be able to catch him. We'll be able to see what, when, how, and who, and all the things around this. And you know what? The ATF don't play around. The ATF is an organization when you start bombing people. When you start planting IEDs, they don't play. And, and good, because I'm, I'm for those guys. C- catch them. Find these assholes. Kick them right out of this country, if that's uh, what's going on. That, in a nutshell, is everything I can tell you about Christmas in Tennessee, or should we call it Baby Beirut today? Because I, I, I don't know. I mean, I would like to know more, and stay tuned on that. We'll have this in other shows coming up, because I, I'm just not done with this subject yet. This just about wraps it up for Christmas in Tennessee. 
So I hope you all had a good uh, listen and moving on. Now a word from our sponsors. Today's sponsor in part by Excel Roofing. Excel Roofing, they do it all. Roofs, siding, framing. You need a house? Give Excel a call. I've used these guys personally in the past, have a professional crew. They're conscious of your job and they want to produce the finest quality of craftsmanship available. Excel Roofing, 763-712-0757. Again, 763-712-0757. Excel Roofing, Dayton, Minnesota. Okay, guys. So in this section, we're going to talk about roadside etiquette. What I mean by roadside etiquette is tow trucks, towing companies, tow tow apparatus, plowing apparatus, plow trucks, plowing companies, and plowing guys who who do driveways, who who do all kinds of stuff in the area. And the inability of you people, some of you people out there, not you, not you, you, not all of you, but some of you, who think that you got to be the guy that's got to blast past uh, an incident, a scene, or you got to be the guy that's got to be in a hurry and get past whatever it is these guys are doing. So that is what we're going to talk about in this segment. Being on the side of the road, I know what it's like to be stranded. I know what it's like to be a tow guy. I know what it's like to be the guy towing somebody who's stranded. And I tell you what, you don't want to be either one of them. But the people that make it worse, the, the guys who make it absolutely the, the most disgusting job in the world are the guys who whiz past you and they are a foot off your butt. They're, a, they're, they're, they're 12 inches from wiping you straight down your truck or the guys who you're, you're plowing out a driveway and you're trying to get the uh, snow backed up so you can move. But, you know, every, everybody knows that when you pull, pull a blade back, you get this hump, this, this bunch of snow that you pull back. So your truck hangs up momentarily and you can't move. You're stuck there. You're, you're going to be there until you can either blade yourself out or it grabs enough traction to, to sling you past that point. But there's always these guys. We depend on inertia. Uh, the, 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 the speed of which the truck grabs, tries to overcome that hump, and you get past it so you can stay in your traction points. But these guys who try to get behind you, get around you, and at the last second, there they are, right, right, right in your tail. You, you can't stop fast enough. They're in a hurry. Uh, you're the bad guy because these guys just couldn't get up five minutes earlier and get past you. Uh, first of all, what are they doing out in a snowstorm when you're trying to get stuff done? Maybe they have places to go. I don't know. I don't care. What, what I do care is I don't get hit or I don't get creamed down the side of my truck or, you know, the lights shine on the truck. They're all bright and shiny and grisly and, and you get all these glitzing and lights. I mean, the lights are the, are the biggest must have most dangerous piece of thing you can have on the truck. People get this look when when the light bars on, or or, or your your warning lights are on, and, and they they get this stare on, like they're trying to see last minute what they can or can't get as as they drove by you. But what they're not paying attention to when they do that is their lane position. You're off in a side, or you're even partially taking a lane up to try and get somebody out of a ditch, or towed up, and then there are these people. They're so they're so enamored. They're so enamored by these lights that their head tilts towards the lights and then their steering wheel tilts towards the light. And the last thing you know, there you are. You and them and a whole bunch of metal grinding and smacking and popping and and now people get hurt. So what I can tell everybody out there, being a plow guy, being a tow, tow driver, and being out on the side of the road is mind your business on your own lane. Don't worry about what we're doing. Uh, I know it's nice and... Oh, cow, what's happening? Oh, we got the lights on. We got someone picking up. There's a whole lot of stuff going on that we have to watch, let alone watch you. You know, one of the things is when you do a recovery, and again, here's the difference between a tow and recovery. A tow 
is a vehicle that can roll under its own wheels. It, it can it can be out there. It can it can flat flat tow. You can push it. You can do whatever you need to do. It's not in the ditch. It's not in a tree. It's not wrapped around a pole. So when you understand the difference between a tow and a recovery, when you call it in, you can say, hey, I'm wrapped around a tree. Well, that ain't a tow. That's a recovery. And you don't, you're not subject to towing prices on just a flat tow. You are subject to a recovery based upon how much time, equipment, and experience the operator has at that point in time in his career. You are at his mercy to try and get your vehicle, your your property, off of things that should never be wrapped around. Um, know, knowing that, you know, nobody wants to pay that bill. Most people have insurance to cover it. Most people have AAA. And I'll tell you what, AAA in the middle of a snowstorm is about as useless as tits on a bore. Because, yes, it's there and it's cheap, but you're going to get, a bunch of guys who don't want to be out there, they're they're doing it at a cut rate, and everybody knows that if you if you do something at a cut rate, you're not going to get the best quality guys. So will they care as much? Highly doubt it. We don't take AAA as a company. Uh, we, we 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 never would. We had some car clubs in the beginning, um, pretty nice clubs, pretty decent. They paid the rate. Uh, but they, but they up front said that if you charge me what you charge the public, we will use you last call. And I looked, I played out and said to him, I said, well, you know what? Why would I do it less for you than I would for someone on the street? And they said, well, because I'm going to send you more of them. And if you do this, we're, we're only going to call you when it's the absolute worst out. And, and I said to him, well, then why would I? Why would I even begin to want to take less for a nice toe versus a crappy toe? Because you know what? You're going to send me the crappiest toes anyway. And we all have a service area, so nobody's out. You know, if you're out of Minneapolis, you're not ta- you're not going up to Duluth, and you're not hauling one from Duluth back down to Minneapolis. You just don't do that. There's, there's locals for that. So these guys who want you to tow for them, they want you to do it for 25 bucks and a buck a mile, don't understand, or they do, but their business is to catch money in between what you pay them and what they pay us. So that's how their that's how their business model works. So car clubs take this amount of money that you all pay into your dues and fees, and, and then they hope for a, a nice light winter, or they hope for something that's not going to be able to take that money away from them. So because that's that's their dough. I mean. It's your money, so you you figure you're going to get a product worth your worth your investment, and they figure we're going to spend as little as possible, and buy the crappiest guys possible so that we can make more margin, and and continue to do this for services to people. So these same people, whether they do recoveries or not, and this is where this goes, is that they're on the side of the road and and they want to get out of your way. They they do not want to be there. Never did. Never wanted to be. Other than winches, toes, and recoveries. Now, now there's there's where the money is on a recovery. You put her in the ditch 50 feet, and you need two trucks, one to, one to tie off to and the other one to anchor off of. Now you got yourself a recovery. And, and, and the really big tow companies who have, they're like tractor trailers, tractors and rotators, those guys have a whole different breed of next-level stuff. Now, these guys who do that, that, they, that truck is what quarter million, and you think they're going to charge you two hundred bucks to get you out of the hole? Ain't going to happen. Two hundred dollars—that's a joke for them. They, they won't start the truck for that. But now, you're down in a valley, two hundred feet below the, the street or the highway, and you got yourself a, a really bad situation. So now, now they got to hook your car up or truck or or semi and drag you up through or around what you just went in to get there. That itself is going to be a job. Now, while they're doing this, here's the traffic on the road zinging by you. You 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 got remote controls to stay off the road. You got curbside controls to operate from there. There's all kinds of things in a truck, but sometimes you just got to get a straight pull on something, and you have to block traffic. That's really if you block traffic, that is the only safe way to know that you're not going to get run into. So for the people out there who 
constantly are in a hurry, who don't understand, who don't pay attention to what is really going on. And it's not just it's not just tow guys. It's not plow guys. It's everybody. It's everybody that does something on the side of the road for somebody, including EMS, fire, police, everybody. So that law we do have here in Minnesota, which is slow down, move over, you know, it's it's really one of those things where you have to be you have to be out there once. And and if you if you really were on trying to do that, there's companies around you. Cops have ride alongs and towing companies have, hey, let's let's go out and do some towing. Now don't get me wrong with towing recovery. We're more urban in our in our towing company. And there are a lot of guys downtown, South Minneapolis, North Minneapolis, all uh, the, the odd even street parking. Now that itself is going to be a whole different thing yet. Those guys hook one, hook two, pull one in the bed, and it's like all up for grabs. But they're out in a snowstorm. You're on the wrong side of the street, whatever even odd is for that day. And now you have to deal with that. Of course, you're going down to impound, you're getting your car back. Can't be fun. So what I can really tell you guys is in the touring world, because that's where my background kind of is, that's where we started uh, our, one of our businesses, we don't want to be there no more than you want us to be there, but we will be there if we can to service you, to help you, but we don't want to die doing it. So have a little respect for the guys who are doing this. Just slow it down, move it over. If you can't move over, crawl by them. Because you're less likely to get hit them if you're doing real slow. And you don't want that. You, you don't want to be the guy who wipes somebody out. And again, if you've seen some of the videos we saw in the towing profession, when you when you hit somebody on the side of a truck, you, you don't just hit them. You, you roll them like a, like a cigar. You roll them down the side of the truck with your car, provided you weren't on a straight hit. And these guys turn into a blender. Uh, they just they, they spin up, they zing up. Well, I'll tell you what. Do not be the guy who hits them. Um, one of the things that we've seen in the past is when the police, you're on a police impound or recovery, let's say recovery, they'll put a, a CSO way further back and they'll put the lights on so it has to slow you down and move you over. In the event that you need to move your truck, reposition your tow truck to do a different grab, a different move the truck on. Once you move that truck on a different angle, you could be blocking traffic. Now you got everybody mad. From that point forward, you, you're now you're on a time crunch. You have to get this done and clear traffic because the cops, they don't want to be there. They just are like, come on, get this done. Let's move on. And I get that because I, I've been on both sides of that. I've been in traffic waiting for that. And I've been the guy on the side of the road trying to do recovery while everybody's waiting for me. Next thing is for these tow guys. Correction. Next thing is for the plow guys. So let's go, let's go take this to the interstate now. Let's take us to a county road. Let's, take, let's get this up to the, to the guys who are throwing salt and put, moving snow at the same time or multi-lane. Now, I have a lot of friends in the, in the DOT. And the smartest thing I've heard someone tell me was they had gotten in an accident with their truck. And, and, the, and the girl next to him says, you hit me. You moved over to me. And the guy says, how can that be? Well, the girl said to the guy, the guy is the driver of the truck, you went into my lane. And I, I didn't think nothing of it, and I thought, well, maybe you did go in her lane. But he corrected me when he said, they don't have a lane. Now, ding, ding, that, that, that hit home with me. You do not have a lane. And I have been thinking about this ever since the guy told me. When you are next to a plow truck, you're not supposed to be there. You don't get a lane. You don't have a lane. You shouldn't have a lane. And if you're that close, literally, you deserve to get run over. You've earned that policy from, from that big tire coming up and rubbing on your car. You don't need to be there. Why would you even begin to think that that's your lane when they're clearing traffic or when they're clearing, or clearing, clearing snow? Don't do it. And if you're one of those people that do sit next to a tow truck or a plow truck or whatever, that when something's going on, you're on borrowed time because eventually something's going to go wrong and you're going to get pinged. They're either going to hit you, 
They're going to. Oh gosh, what would you say? They're, they're going to something. Some, a piece of equipment could come off the truck. It could sling over. The, the cable could snap, and the snap into you. If it don't snap the guy, you know anything can happen. It's a it's a it's a recovery. So I want you to be ultra clear to the people who hear this and tell people about this podcast, i.e. Hutcast, that sometimes you need to get out of the way. Stay out of that way. So that pretty much sums up my plow, truck drivers, road, road emergency, segment two. Now a word from our sponsors. Today's sponsor in part by Excel Roofing. Excel Roofing, they do it all. Roofs, siding, framing. You need a house? Give Excel a call. I've used these guys personally in the past, have a professional crew, they're conscious of your job, and they want to produce the finest quality of craftsmanship available. Excel Roofing, 763-712-0757. Again, 763-712-0757. Excel Roofing, Dayton, Minnesota. Okay, so, like, this isn't enough in the news. Let's talk about the dreaded. The dreaded COVID shot. The shot that, well, magically delicious came through so fast that everybody had to get it right away. Everybody had to make a make a make this pandemic go away. Well, I'm not opposed to the shot. I don't even know if I'm for the shot. What I do know is in past history, we've had shots for measles. We've had shots for uh, shingles. We've had we've had shots for everything. And and we get those shots now. You know, now we have these shots. Hey, you know, you go into your doctor and they go, well, you're, you're due. Do you, do you want to, do you want to um, rebooster your stuff? And you got to think, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I suppose I, I think so. I, you know, and, and I, I have never had shingles, but I've had a shot for it. I've never had uh, any other type of disease that I've had shots for. Maybe because of the shots, I just don't know. But a lot of people out there, a lot of the newbies, the new generation, the the generation of hey, if 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 there was a herd immunity, I, I want to be part of that. And if that's the right, that is their right to not be part of a shot. So today's kind of topic is going to be about. Is it the right of theirs, or is it the right of ours that they don't get one, or they do get one? I I, I don't know. It, it, it's a very, it's a slippery slope, and, and I am so over COVIDed that I could puke about COVID. No doubt, it's a real deal. There, there's no doubt in my mind that this is this is something that's happening. What I'm doubting is the the, the news's aspect and, and the and the way they push that down our throats on a, on a daily basis. And, and, and to me, I believe there's a difference between, oh gosh, being being COVID positive or symptomatic. Because again, these guys are doing this, they're, they're, they're throwing the book at this going, how do we deal with this? No one's ever dealt with it. I'm not a Waltz fan, but how can he deal with this? You, you know, he... He, I shouldn't say he. There's more than he involved here. There's there's a whole, there's a whole Senate. There's a whole Congress. There's a whole there's a whole world dealing with this. So, for us in Minnesota, the he is the guy taking the heat. That's why that's the he and heat. And you know, sometimes I, I don't know if it's a fair shot or, or not a fair shot. I guess it's more about how we judge this guy and what he's doing with this and how he's trying to control it. But you know what? You ain't controlling this. You, you can try and curb it. You can try and throttle back some exposures but you know the, the the few of us who are and i like to say the howard hughes of the world because when you touch something you don't want to touch it because you know there's germs on it and, and there can be good germs there can be bad germs there's still germs where are those people now they're doing the same thing because to them it's just tuesday you know they you walk into a building you, you ain't grabbing the handle you're, you're you're putting a glove on and you're grabbing the handle opening the door so for us guys who normally did the Howard Hughes thing 
we, we don't care. It's just, again, it's just a Tuesday. Well, the people who went in front of you and they've been sick for two weeks and they're walking around being this super carrier and they don't care. They're shoving their kids off in schools. They're shoving their kids in preschools. Now your kids get that from their kids because they're so irresponsible. They're irresponsible enough to not care about your kids, but they care about their life so that they're not inconvenienced to have to deal with their kid. Kind of how I feel. I, I don't know how they how they do this, but I I can't logically assume anything different than they're doing this. Personally speaking, if my kid was sick, he stayed home, and I stayed home too, or the wife stayed home, and it was just this constant, ugh, had to deal with it. A lot of people don't deal with it that way. They deal with it with, I can still go to work. I don't have to deal with this kid. Let someone else do it. And that's the problem with today's society. Let someone else deal with it. And they don't deal with it themselves. And not society as a whole, but enough society where back in the old days, you used common sense. And I have preached common sense in my last episode. And it, and it ain't common enough. Again, quoting Dr. Phil, common sense is just not common enough. So these people, don't. these same people don't want to get a shot. Uh, you're violating my, my civil rights. You're, the, the shot is going to do this to me. The shot, we don't know that. Where are you getting your intel? Because I don't know that. Even even the people giving the shots, they kind of know it. I would hope that they, if there was something uh, dramatically terrible about a shot, they'd say, well, maybe let's not do that and, and keep their mind off the, 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 the money prize and keep us on the healthy prize. But I, I don't know that. Neither do you. So we all have an opinion based upon what we've seen, what we think. And again, don't get me wrong. COVID's real. It's a real deal. But the flu is real. And SARS was real. And the other slash sicknesses we've had previous years are still real. Now, if you go to the CDC of Minnesota, look at the numbers, you'll see that 0.02% of the people who get infected are, are, are critically infected. Now, let me rephrase that. Infected and critically infected. Doesn't mean that if you come in with a with a heart attack and you're on the table and you die of your heart attack, but you're still COVID positive, that does not mean that you died of COVID. It might not help your situation, but it's not going to kill you from it. The heart attack took you. The car accident took you. And you hear these stories all the time. Well, if they're COVID positive, we can put them in that column. And then they and then that person or that agency can file for COVID dollars based upon this pandemic. That's a real deal. I talked to a hospital administrator says that those are columns that you check on. You check them off. Boom. COVID positive. Heart attack. Hit a tree. Cracked his head open. But COVID positive. Now, to me, that's not telling the truth. And in my world, if you don't tell the truth, you just start right lying. How can I trust that? How can you trust it? Wear a mask. Let other people wear a mask. Wear a mask that, you, you know, because we didn't have masks in the beginning because they said, and I quote, this is not airborne. And when did that change? It changed right away when we knew it was airborne. And we kept saying, well, how is it being transmitted? You ain't touching nothing. You ain't licking the guy's door handle as you walk into the store. How does it get transmitted? Well, then magically delicious. Boom. Well, people cough and breathe all the time. When is the bugs nastier? It's a nasty bug. So I guess my point I'm getting with this is the shot itself, Pfizer and the other group, you know, you, you don't know how many people are involved or how many people got into developing it, but the companies throw their name out there like it's a badge of honor, and that's their PR. So Pfizer holds their chest out. It's got an S on it. It's short for Superman. I did this. Due to less regulation from the Trump administration so that they could fast-track this system and bypass some of the, I don't know if you call it safeties or not. Let's uh, let's call it bureaucracy. Let's say they fast-track this so that their bureaucracy could be shortened so they could produce results sooner. Makes sense to me. We're in a pandemic. What will the next administration do? Because in a nutshell, you got one party who likes to put a lot of control on things. We know what the party that is, and I ain't going to say which it isn't. And the other party wants to get stuff done. But they still have their share of bureaucracy. 
because bureaucracy comes money. And if they can tag, delay, change, and push agendas, that still continues to spend our money. So when you ha- hear someone and they talk to you about, are you getting the flu shot, or are you getting the, co- the, the SARS shot, or are you getting the shingle shot, ask them what the difference is. Ask them, say, say what's the difference between a flu shot and a, and a COVID shot? COVID's never been, never been proven. First thing I'd say, well, the flu shot is only good for one variation of the flu. And now they're talking about mutation of COVID-19. So we're going we're gonna to have a COVID-19.5, a COVID-19.8, COVID-19.5.5.8.5. How many times are they going to change this around? Because, again, nobody knows how this is going to change or move. But they know it's going to change or move. Here it is, December, end of the year. Happy birthday, Jesus. And we are trying to figure out what's going to happen in the next move. We're indoors. We are we are psychologically locked down. We are physically, in some sort, say it's locked down. Waltz likes to take and lock us down. Okay, I, I understand his point, but I don't understand the logic in his point. Because even he knows that that's not going to change anybody's uh, opinion of how and what they get this 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 illness this virus so do you get the shot you know everybody says i'm gonna be the 50th guy not the first guy well i've watched the news i watched the news event the other day on tv where i think it was from the washington dc the the medical hospital out there where where he gets this first shot he rolls out it's on tv here's this big pr thing and you know what this doctor gets this shot sticks it in his arm and the and the syringe was empty so here's this other doctor spinning this thing like he's doing something with it right on tv and i didn't catch it one of my buddies who does uh, uh covid test filtering test he, he, he does something with covid and he's Good friend, and he, he says, thing's empty. I played it again. I played it again. I thought, dude, he, he can't be any more correct on this. It was empty because the, the plunger never moved. So here are two, Walter Reed. It was a Walter Reed hospital. And here are, here are two doctors in front of the world, not just Washington, in front of the world saying, look, I took my first COVID shot. I'm the guy. And there's nothing in it. I don't know about you, but I consider that a lie. Put some juice in that thing. Push it through. Let's see if you walk funny or you got to you got stutter after we're done. So yeah, there's that. I don't know. I, you know, I sit in these podcasts and, and and I actually sit back and I, I I talk to a lot of people during the day, and I get a lot of opinions. And I just try to float somewhere in the middle and say, okay, what does or doesn't make sense? I got a good center friend. He is a health and human services guy. He, he always likes to walk, you know, make sure that our, our disabled and our vulnerables are, are watched after. I think he's doing a good job. You know, I'm not going to say his names. Maybe someday we'll have him on the show and he can, he can speak for himself. Good guy. Some guys don't like him. They don't like him because he's got a D next to his name. Too bad. That's too bad because you know what? He, he's, he, we can learn something from him. Whether he's got a D or an R or an I next to his name, it shouldn't matter after the fact. But not to turn this political. We're not going to turn this into a great divide. The shot, yes or no? Where do you stand on it? Think about it. How are you going to stand on it? Are you one of these anti-people that should inoculate their kids? Because we have some people like that. We know people like that. I ain't say no names because these people listen to my po- podcast. Excuse me. They listen to my hutcast. And I don't want to social event them into a problem where they're like, hey, you talked about us, dude. I went, no. But we did. We did have that conversation. And they're, they're anti. We're not going to do it. Okay. Don't do it. The beautiful thing about freedom of choice and freedom is that if you don't want to, if you don't want to take part in a shot if you don't want to take part in a event don't do it but when the people around you 
push you into their agenda because they believe it's good for you, and if it's good for you, it's good for them, there's where I draw the line. And that line is a bold line. It is a solid line. It is a line of structure that will not move, not in my mind. So if, you, if, you, if you're pro-shot, don't shun someone else into not taking it, or, or, or because they're not taking it, don't, don't, don't look down on them. Don't look at anything. Mind your own business. You want to take a shot? Take a shot. If you don't want to take the shot, don't take the shot. Just don't tell us how to do our lives. And you might be saying, well, it's for the better of people. <laughs> okay. So it's not taking meth. So it's, so it's not getting drunk and driving your car into, uh, in the last segment, into a pole, wrap around a pole. Well, that's better for the people too, but does that stop them? No. They do it anyway because people do what they do. Whether you want them to or not, so focus on yourself and decide if the shot's right for you or if it's not right for you. Again, personally, I'm not against it. Maybe I'll give it some time, see how, how it lands out, making sure that, uh, as I've seen a, a meme on hate book, and it said, uh, if you've been subject to a, you know, it's one of these funny things where if you've been subject to a COVID shot and you're, you're entitled to compensation, oh, man, that, that's, that, that's symmetry for me. Because that's what's going to happen. Done that in the car industry. You work at brakes. Well, now you've got mesothelioma, uh, the cancer. Now you've got carbon brake clean ingestion in your bloodstream. Take your pick. Any of us car guys, paint body guys, isocyanates. You talk to a paint guy. Probably got a nervous twitch. His eye fleeks around. You, you know, he's constantly jumping from side to side. Who knows? There's a lot of car guys out there that do different type of chemicals e even though we say oh they're human safe they're not they're proposition 65 they, they're cancer causing they're, they've proven it guys i wish you the best of luck in your decision to be a one of these guys who take the shot one of these guys who don't take the shot but for the love of jesus all don't shun someone who does or does not take that shot it's not up to you if they don't take the shot and die it's up to jesus if they take the shot and die well, now it's up to them. So, this concludes segment three, season one, episode two. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for listening. And you know what? Just tell someone. Tell them that you, you know, this guy who knows a guy who talks about guys. That's us, Hutcast. We'll have the website up soon. Give us your emails. Tell us what you think.